Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. We have a lot of exciting session about digital marketing, sales, e-coms, and many more. Make sure to download the VFA app on your mobile phone, which allow you to join a session more easier and via mobile. With that, chill for a few minutes before we begin the session very shortly. Good afternoon, good evening, welcome to Hyper Connectedness and Digital Transformation. I am Tam from Nestle Vietnam and I will be your host for this session together with Binu. Hello viewers joining us from around the world. I'm Binu Jacob, CEO of Nestle Vietnam and joining me as co-host is Tam, a head of integrated media and digital champion for Nestle. Over the next 30 minutes we will share with you our exciting journey to bring our vision to life, to make Nestle Vietnam the growing dragon reference in the digital economy. Just some house rules to ensure a smooth flowing session today. So please keep an eye on the chat box and make sure not to flood it with spam so you can catch the important announcement and links on how you can engage with us via slido.com. You may see the chat box for the code to join our session and make sure that you have your mobile phone on standby to scan the QR codes on the slide and see career opportunity in marketing, sales, data analytics across all the Nestle market around the globe. Great, let's begin the session. We know, so you've been with uh, Nestle for 25 years. Yep. And prior to coming to Vietnam, you was leading uh, infant nutrition business in China. So that probably the most advanced businesses digitally. So how did that shape your perspective towards the role of digitalization? Yeah, let me start with uh, an, uh, a story of how I landed in China. I went to China about six years ago. Okay. And after a week in the office, I had to get a haircut. So I stepped out of the office, went to a mall outside, and I saw something that looked like a hair salon. I walked inside, the people getting their haircuts, getting facials done, etc. But I couldn't figure out what was going on because suddenly something would appear on a screen with someone's face and, and the person's name and somebody would get up and go get the haircut or the facial or whatever done. Nobody was supporting you back then. I, I, had, I didn't know the language so I didn't know how ah. the whole system worked. And then I realized that as soon as you enter the hair salon, there's a QR code outside. Ah. You scan the QR code, you just have to say what service you want and automatically it logs you in and it puts you in a queue. And when your turn comes, your face comes on the screen, your name is there, they know everything about you. Okay. And for me, this was my first aha about China, that it is digitally so transformational that even an old industry like a hair salon is transformed digitally. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, imagine you spend, you know, half an hour or some minutes, you know, waiting for people to come and service you and and then it turns out everything is automation. Yes, and the, the whole thing, the beauty of the whole thing is this digital transformation drives efficiency because they Definitely, don't waste a single yes. minute. Yes. Everything is logged in and the service is quick and, and people are out in, in no time. Mm. And one of the other things when I went to China is I realized that till then, 
everybody keeps talking about Apple as the epitome of digitalization. Right? Mm. But when I went there, I discovered another company. It's called Xiaomi. Yeah. Xiaomi, a lot of people don't know. They actually sell more smartphones today than Apple does. But oh, that's not the beauty of Xiaomi. Yeah. Xiaomi makes everything from refriger refrigerators to televisions to air purifiers. But the beauty of Xiaomi is everything is interconnected. Mm. So I had a Xiaomi air purifier at home. So when I left the office, I could, with my mobile phone, click on activating that the air purifier and set it to what time. So by the time I reached home, the room was completely purified. And All not right. only that, the, the uh, app even showed me when I had to change the filter inside. And when it was time for the filter to be changed, I could just click on something. It would take me to a Xiaomi.com page and they would deliver the filter home. So this is really what I truly call hyper-connectedness. Yeah. And this is, in my opinion, what really drives uh, digital transformation. Yeah. Imagine the consumer experience. So all the convenience enabled by, you know, that kind of automation, connectedness. And then I believe the kind of experience we create for her would be very, very pleasant. You know, it, it's not about pushing. It's absolutely, not, yeah. absolutely. Because you really Amazing. understand the need and then you address that need through multiple touch points. Data is powerful. Absolutely. So again, coming here to Vietnam, this was also my um, inspiration to see how we could do the same hyper-connectedness and driving digital transformation. Yeah. So, Tom, you probably uh, are the person who was there at the beginning of this journey for us about yeah. a year and a half back when we decided to start this. So probably you can explain to the audience how we brought this hyper-connectedness and digital transformation to life. Sure, sure. Vietnam. Of course, of course. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So the first we'll start with the way that we structure uh, what we call uh, DAF. We stand for actually Digitalization as Celebration Forum. So it's a forum. It's not a task, it's not a project, but it's a forum because it's connected. Uh, it connects multiple functions. It connects people and it's end to end. Uh, it's not about marketing people doing you know, media and uh, fancy marketing job, but it's connect all across. So if you see the way that it structures, there are three pillars. One is consumer shopper, probably to do with sales and marketing. But then we have this uh, commerce, which we also involve and include sales, either offline or online. And then last but not least, we also have this extended to cover uh, operation. So operation, you know, even people at the factory or you know, people working in supply chains, they also are part of this forum. And so that is the kind of uh, connection that we create. And so that's mostly uh, from the horizontal, you know, that that's, that's expansion that covers that inclusion. But uh, when we we'll talk about governance, we have another connection, you know, but probably, you know, vertical. We'll see on the top, of course, you, you know, you're always the sponsor of this uh, digitalization agenda. But not just you, we have the head of the function, all the member of the management board being the advisory, uh, given, you know, guideline direction. And because they were there, all the key people in their function, in their department, also encouraged and endorsed to, you know, be in the forum and to inspire and to digitalize whichever they do in whatever areas that they operate in. So that is how we create that vertical uh, 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 connection. So, and then, what we do beyond that is we'll, we create, we'll sit in each of the business unit. Uh, so what we call BU Digital Champion. So that is the funnel where we can uh, inject the digitalization spirit through innovation, best practice building, capability buildings, and whatever. Somebody have a good idea, it's like, uh, you know, uh, I want to do this app because I'm having this uh, struggle with the process there will be a community supporting you to make this happen. So that is the hyper connectors with people, you know, enabling, uh, powering, and, you know, making things happen. It's not just an idea, it's not just you, it's the whole company. This is brilliant because I think the point you're trying to make is driving digital transformation is not just 
looking at function by function. In the past, we used to look at, many companies still do, look at function and say, how can I digitally transform HR? How can I digitally transform uh, supply chain? And then you have terms like MarTech, FinTech, sales tech, yeah. etc. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this. I think you yep. need to do this. But the true benefit of doing a digital transformation comes when you try to cut across these and do an end-to-end -end digital transformation. Yep. Right? And the other point I think from what you're making is, it's all about the people. Yep. At the end, no digital transformation will work if you don't have a hyper-connected organization. Yeah. And people connect with each other, know what each other uh, teams are doing. And only if you do this end-to-end, -end, transformation really happens. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a brilliant example of how you can bring this to life in the organization. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure our audience, many of them may have many questions regarding um, this. So if you're listening and if you'd like to ask some questions pertaining to how the Digital Acceleration Forum was implemented, feel free to go to the Slido, ask your question, and we will also prioritize questions based on the number of likes each question uh, gets. So if you feel a question is relevant for you, just click the like and the questions would pop to the top. Uh, so, Tom, given this, um, what do you think we should be doing? What are the kind of projects that you believe are really driving this? No, actually, I want to ask you this question. Tell me, right, tell me, with the digital acceleration forum that we've been running, we've been driving, what is your top of mind, what is your favorite projects? Let's say one or two projects. Can you share with us? It's a bit hard to just, you know. Oh, I'm trying to get that. <laughs> pinpoint everything down to two projects. Because, you know, the factory and the operations team have done an outstanding job of yeah. really transforming. Indeed, yes. Uh, because many of our factories today in the last one year have almost become paperless. Yeah. They've put something like 64 different apps to remove the paper out of the daily operations. At the same time, our marketing folks have also done a great job in really driving digital uh, campaigns and you know that we are also uh, won many awards for driving yeah. digital campaigns here in Vietnam. So there's a lot of great work happening but if you truly ask me uh, what my favorite projects are, uh, I'll probably have to invite um, Nam. Yeah. So Nam, I'd like to call you here. Hello, Vino. So, so Nam is, uh, is, a, is a geek. He's a <laughs> data and CRM lead and he uh, joined us uh, some time back and for me Nam is one person who really understands data and CRM but it doesn't end there. He tries to make it relevant for the business so the business benefits from this. So Nam, I, I know your favorite project and the project you led is the ODC which also happens to be my favorite project but can you just share with me and the viewers about what this ODC project was all about and how did you really come up with this? Yep. Uh, okay, Bimu, uh, and hello and as well. Uh, so let's talk about us first. So as we know that uh, we are FMCG company and building the connection with end consumer is never easy for FMCG company. Because we're different with other company like retailer company or mobile company like Samsung, Apple or Adidas or Nike. They have their own store, they have their own device to connect directly with the consumer. We are different. We ha it's much harder for us. Yes. Yeah. We're selling through uh, our distribu distributor partner, right? distribution partner. Uh, like our product come to the uh, supermarket, come to the mum baby store, our wet market, and then it come, it, it, it come to the end consumer. Very hard for us to be the connection, obviously. And I have a lot of questions at the moment. And what I struggle to fighting the question, like, uh, I find amazing things in, in Nestle. It's like getting the knowledge sharing from other team, like from global team, from other country teams, for example, in this case, I get a, I get a sharing from uh, China Nutrition team uh, for the CRM One Store One Code, where they're connecting, where building connection and recruiting consumer at the store, at the modern trade, at the moment. And it lit me up a lot. And I realized that the, 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 our consumer base is big, especially offline consumer base. And then it, it, uh, it brings me to the offline data collection, the ODC. And, uh, but it's not the end. 
besides that, like the collaboration spirit is one of the things that bring our technology to, to life. And uh, here I, I have to say thank you to the uh, marketing activation team who's like leading all the offline activity. That, that helped me to like build a connection, bring it to life, like connect with the end consumer. So we recruiting con our, our consumer through like the offline redemption uh, promotion that we are having offline or like uh, via offline sampling that consumer where consumer receiving our trial product. Mm -hmm. So we are building the, 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 the project from that. And that is also the reason why we named the project as ODC, as the offline data collection, where we starting the project. Brilliant. Offline data collection. It also ma makes me uh, curious about the strength of our offline connect programs with consumers. If yeah. I'm not mistaken, we reach almost 4 million consumers every year through direct contact. Yeah. And now with this ODC, we can actually translate the direct contacts into a digital contact. Exactly. That's the this is This is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Uh, but can you maybe explain to me and the audience, how exactly does this work? If you are somebody out there in the field having a direct contact with the, with the consumer, how do you translate that into a, a contact and, a, and the data? Yeah, surely. Uh, I prepare a video today. Uh, let me walk you through the story of the ODC and uh, see the result, also see uh, what coming with the ODC. Today, Vietnam Digital Ecosystem evolving constantly. Vietnam is a mobile-first market with 94% internet user owning a smartphone. They're using us as their preferred connection device. Our 4G coverage is more than 90%, but offline transactions are still the key driver for the FMCG category. And that's like we have a huge marketing activation coverage to get in touch with our end consumer. Should we wait for consumer to change their behavior from offline to online? We digitalize ourselves to build a connection with our end consumer. Our solution is ODC, offline data collection. We have one store, one course feature. Each outlet will have the unique QR code for performance tracking. Simple registration form with OTP verification to ensure data quality. Multiple campaign types with dynamic logic management. We collected rich consumer data with personal behavior and transactional data. And we will know who they are, what they buy, when they buy, where they buy, what drives them to buy, how much they buy. We have automatic dashboard to manage campaign performance. 5 BUs, 34 projects, 2,000 outlets, 63 provinces across the country. We recruited 180,000 consumers with 13 data attributes. Cost per acquisition at $2 versus $6 from our activity. And it's just the beginning as learning never stops. The future will be more exciting with new innovation. Automate the campaign setup. Integration with activation app. Zalo OTP. Loyalty membership. One Nestle user profile. Open entry shops, dedicated server, smart data integration, optical character recognition, and partnership expansion. The future is now and it is digital. Let's join the digitalization journey with us. This is great. So those of you who have questions on the ODC project or anything else, again, please go to the Slido, raise your question and like questions that you think you also need answers to. Coming to the second project that uh, Tom asked me about that I really enjoyed doing is the RSS project, the retailer self-service. Now imagine you're a retailer in a small town being serviced by a distributor and the service is once a week. So somewhere halfway through the week, you run out of the stock. What do you do? This is where the project comes in. And for this, I'd like to invite Cham, our sales excellence manager. Uh, welcome, Cham. So Cham has been uh, leading this RSS initiative for a while. So Cham, maybe you can help the audience understand. Why did we come up with a project like this? Thanks, Vido. 
So as you know, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has prevented people movement and incurs very high cost for operation. Mm. And uh, I'm looking at uh, which process can be automated so that we can continue to drive revenue by optimizing costs. Secondly, uh, retailers nowadays have more choice to order versus before. They can order from distributor, from modern jet, even from e-commerce. And they want to order whenever they need. And finally, I start to see early EB2B players in Vietnam market. They're reaching out to retailers and convincing them to use their ordering apps, just name like Teleo or Vinsop. And I'm really, to, I'm really proud to share with you that Vietnam is the first market in Nestle Global to implement RDS. This is great uh, to hear that we are pioneering uh, this, the spirit of, of taking a very traditional model of servicing retailers, traditional trade, and really using digital to transform the way we service them. Uh, this is fantastic. But how does it really work? If you're a retailer and you run out of stock, the natural propensity will be to just pick up the phone and call up the distributor and ask them to come in and uh, serve, right? How does this solution, how is it better than what they have today? Yeah. Let me show you the demo. Firstly, uh, you need to um, install the app. You can search for the Nestle shop in the CH Play or Apple Store. Then you can log in with your account and username. And then now you can order. You can browse the category and the product. And as you can see, you see a lot of information about the product details, about the pricing, and also the promotion. Here you can choose the quantity. You can you can up um, you can adjust the quantity and check promotion. So from here you can see that how Ades providing retailer with better visualization and better product information versus the telesales. Yeah, th this is this is great. Uh, tell me what's the scale of what we have done so far and what kind of results are we seeing? Yeah. So this year we already um, installed to five thousand. 800 stores across the five cities and oh. interestingly that 83 percent of retailers already bought from us from RDS in the past three months uh, generating 23 percent of e-intensity wow so you're saying that if we have 100 sales today 23 is coming from this through the source yes and very encouraging that 44 percent of them continue to repurchase from us on a monthly basis. Which means we are really addressing a need that the retailer had and now we are fulfilling it through a digital solution. Yeah, that's true. This is this is great. But what's our plan to scale up? How how rapidly can we take this up from where we are today? Yeah. So this year I plan to reach to ten thousand store and next year ambition to roll out to thirty thousand store and scale up to one hundred thousand store in the next two years. And in order to do that, I need to build an ecosystem. Firstly, I need to build the initial initiative master plan to mapping with e-commerce. Secondly, I also need to explore and build up the dynamic delivery solution mm -hmm. so that our distributor can supply to them quickly. And thirdly, e-wallet is very important uh, to for the retailer so that they can have more choice uh, to for the payment. And fourthly, microfinance to help retailer have more credit day and uh, fifthly um, I also need to develop the ECIM so that we can um, collect the data and serve them better and lastly um, I also need to like capture um, the fuel delivery mm. so that we we can ship to them within the timing this is great uh, thank you Cham for sharing this great initiative to transform sales from very very traditional model to a very digitized model and i'm sure the the audience and the viewers will have a lot of questions on this so again feel free to go to the slido ask your question and uh, feel free to um, ask the question and even like a certain question that you may uh, relate to and it will come up on top so tom what do you think to be honest, Bino, as the champions of digitalization, those two, RSS and ODC, also my personal favorite.
Right? I talked to the team, I was there during the reviewing and we really see, you know, huge potential to really scale those initiatives, you know, further scale it up and we'll see, you know, big prospect of uh, having those as the, uh, you know, uh, elements that have created our competitive advantage, you know, two, three years uh, further down the road. And on the same aspect, how about you? I would really want to hear from you, right? Uh, what is your vision? Let's say three, four years further down the road, then uh, what is your ambition for the digitalization? And what is the critical enablers that we cannot miss? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a great question. Our vision for digital transformation is simply this, that we want to be the growing dragon reference in the digital economy. Yeah. Now, what does this mean? We are a fairly developing market. So in a developing market, we want to move from the very traditional way of doing things rapidly to a digitized model to do things and to transform it. Yeah. And we want to be the company that leads the trend. Yeah. Leads the trend. And, and for this, and this is not just digital transformation for the sake of digital transformation. It has to lead to results. It has to lead to growth. Yeah, and which definitely. is why we say growing dragon reference yeah. in the digital economy. Now to make this happen, it's all about the people. Mm. Technology for me is second. The most important aspect is getting the right people into the organization with the same spirit to drive the change, to drive the transformation and bring in the business results. Yeah. So if you are one of those people who are passionate about digital and who want to make a difference in the world of the, of the consumer and the business, Nestle is the place for you. Yeah, I, I feel very related show because I, I've been here, I've been through the whole journey. So for me, with all of this digitalization agenda and, you know, the opportunity that, you know, I have, I feel very inspired and empowered, right? And it's, it, it has been a great journey for me, both on the uh, learning and also from the personal growth perspective. So, yeah, I think, uh, thank you, Binu, for sharing with us your uh, story and also inspire us with your vision, digitalization, culture, how we're going to scale it up. Very inspiring. And so for the audience, uh, I believe, I hope that you also uh, inspired with, you know, ha what has been shared uh, up to now. And now we are having this uh, pause. You can please share with us what is your key tech out, you know, of the session so far. Uh, there is option. Please let us know. We really look forward to uh, get get the feedback from you and you know understand know what is your key tech out of the session and please participate and to prepare for the Q and A, may, may I invite Nam to also join with us? Hello, I'm back. Hey. Thank you. Okay. You see hyper connectedness is leading. Okay, uh, Tom, this is great. It looks like the last 25 minutes of our discussion, the audience has picked up most of the key messages. And I'm particularly pleased to see <laughs> that the first point on the fact that hyper connectedness and enterprise digitalization with people at the core is really the proven model for digital transformation. If there was one message that we really wanted the audience to pick up, it is this, and I'm so glad uh, that it has been. So, uh, Tom, I'm also told that we have a lot of questions coming from the audience. Yeah, I'm receiving a lot of questions. Actually, I need to, yeah, decide. Oh, I don't need to decide, actually, because there's a voting mechanism. So, I will share the... Uh, Top question, you know, the question with top voting first. All right, first one uh, regarding ODC, we got 11 vote. How do the ODC projects fit in line with data and privacy concern? To you now. Yeah, uh, so I do believe that uh, data and privacy is like the biggest topic as of now that people really care. And uh, in Vietnam, we similar dust as well. Uh, so we do we do like care about the uh, privacy, uh, the right of the consumer, and we do protect 
that. Uh, so for ODC, we always like uh, getting the consent of the consumer. They always the one who proactively giving the consent for us, like uh, giving us the right to connect with them. Secondly, like we ensure that the data is like uh, uh, correct. So that's why we adding the feature. The important feature is like OTP one time pairing. Uh, so it ensure that the phone number that consumer is using to register is correct and that is belong to the right person as well. So that's how we ensure that the data quality and also the data privacy is secure with the consent of the consumer. Thank you, Nam. And next question, we have also a very high vote. How long does Nestle wish to anticipate in this digital transformation role now? And what has been your biggest challenge to date in doing so? Uh, Vinu, you wanna take this question? Oh, I think you're probably better placed to take this down. Sure. So, you know, during this uh, digital transformation journey, uh, I am glad to say that we're quite on track regarding the buy-in of, of the organization, the support from uh, the top management board, and uh, in terms of governance, we have a very clear structure and discipline in making things really happen. The challenge, if uh, you ask, for me, it would definitely be the digital talent because uh, we're looking at a new initiative. We always, we always try to be visionary and futuristic. Uh, we're talking about the topics which is not available, which is not there in the competition. If you know, we're talking about something is not there. So we really need the right mindset, the kind of talent to discuss a change and have elaborate and you know, make some idea and concept into you know, something uh, effective and something you know, uh, that is workable. And for me, the key and the key challenge and also the uh, you know, key enabler as Vino mentioned earlier is the talent, digital foot uh, talent. Okay. Next question. Is Nestle experienced with the employee who is struggling to adopt digital transformation? And how do you think to overcome that challenge? And I, I, I think there's another similar uh, question. Yeah, hi Binu, you have worked for Nestle in various global locations. And I am wondering how the digital divine impact digital transformation within Nestle. Thanks. So yeah, both about digital digitalization adoption within the organization. Yeah, yeah I think uh, both are kind of connected questions. So I'll try and, uh, and uh, combine the two. I think it's a great question. It's true um, that when you are in any kind of transformation, whether it's digital transformation or anything else, you need to get the people along. And it's true that not everybody in the organization would be at the same stage of their understanding of digital and also their belief in digital. So I come from the school of thought that it's better to prioritize people who have the willingness to do it rather than just people who have the skills to do it. Because the skills can be learned, it can be built over time. But if you don't have the willingness, then it becomes an issue. So in Nestle, um, when we hire people in general, we always make sure that we prioritize the will over the skill. So most people inside the organization are curious. They want to learn. They want to learn new things. And it's the role of the organization and particularly my role to ensure that we have an organizational culture where we provide the basic infrastructure and the basic facilities to pe for people to learn and grow. And digital is no exception. Right? So if, you just, if I just give you a concrete example, many years ago in China when I embarked on this digital acceleration journey, it was very clear that majority of the people in the company were not digital first in their thinking. But yet, the beauty is a lot of people really were curious and they wanted to learn. Mm. So we, we partnered with, with one of our um, companies there to train our people. Mm. And in fact, luckily for us, this company was just based one floor above us. So they were <laughs> literally in our offices all the time, partnering together with the teams. And day in, day out, there is no better way to learn than do. You have to do to learn. Mm. So when you're put on projects where you're forced to learn, you will learn. So that's the first thing. So for me, digital divide is not a permanent thing. It is a transient thing. 
yes they will be divided but the more we facilitate people to start moving from digital ignorance to digital knowledge and then of course belief and then they transform the whole organization mm -hmm. at the same time when we hire people afresh this is something we keep always in mind we make sure that the people we hire in coming in fresh into the organization are digital first in their thinking even though they may not have their skills but they have the thinking is that digital is the way to go yeah if i may add on to that my personal experience you know all that time i've been here is you know the endorsement from from Bino as the market head i always remember and say you have to do it we are okay that you fail but you gotta fail fast so you yeah. can you know, get up and try it again but do not fail twice you know for the same mistake and make sure that you learn so yeah that is, is the kind of encouragement we all have to make sure that you know we have all the right to start you know from doing and be not afraid of mistake you know making mistake and that is how we learn that is how we digitalize right so yeah very very uh, very good very uh, good sharing. i think tom we are uh, looks like we are almost running out of time we probably have time for one question ah okay this one question i think is about Ecom. We haven't touched on e-com. So how how digital transformation can change the e-commerce market grow through Nestle? Yeah. Okay. I think uh, great question. I'll I'll start and maybe I, I will pass it on to Nam to uh, to add to it. Yeah. Uh, in the the way we have organized ourselves in uh, in Nestle is e-com is not a standalone unit, and e-commerce e has to be integrated with the rest of the functions whether it's media whether it's data crm whether it's the sales key account so in nestle we've now put e-commerce under our sales unit but there is part of e-commerce that is also sitting in what we call the uh, corporate uh, marketing team so this way we get the best of both we get the key account experience uh, expertise to handle the customer but at the same time at the back end we get the support of the data the crm the media team uh, to really work together to make e-commerce uh, work uh, so maybe nam you can add also a little bit more on how we exactly we use data and crm into e-commerce to drive the e-commerce growth yep uh, so uh, with digital transformation and we investing in data and crm we understand the consumer data we understand the consumer behavior and by having the direct connection with them so we bringing them inform them like in every campaign that we have in e-commerce and together with that we also leverage that data on facebook uh, together with facebook and google to fighting them to fighting the signal on facebook and google uh, and we 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 uh, improve the efficiency the media efficiency on the cpas campaign while we go with facebook or the google smart shopping where we go with google that's how we involving uh, the data in uh, uh, to maximize the performance of e-commerce. Yep. Okay, it sounds like maybe we have time for just one more question. One last question. One last question. Yeah. So I will pick this question regarding first party data. Yep. I think it's uh, yeah very kind of hot topics. So what is your prediction in terms of how first party data will be used for Nestle once cookies vanish? <coughs> okay. That's a very good question, and uh, we are talking about that a lot. Uh, so first of all, in, in terms of uses, like uh, we, as I mentioned a lot, like we have the connection directly with the consumer. So we enable the connection with them through the direct channel, like email, SMS, or the messaging platform like Facebook or uh, Zalo in Vietnam. Uh, that's the first one. Second one is like we leveraging that in media to enhance the uh, media efficiency, not on just like awareness campaign, but also for performance campaign. Uh, you can el elaborate more on that uh, for yeah. the media side. In terms of application, in terms of new cases, so first party data, we're looking at you know various uh, application. Uh, we can use first party data to personalize uh, content on our website yep. right different people will show different content when they mm -hmm. arrive at the website and also we can personalize our branded building uh, brand building uh, campaigns with our currently uh, where we run multiple campaigns on uh, dco dynamic data inform yes, performance yes. Yep. and if i i think time doesn't allow so yeah uh, that would be the last question that we'll take and thank you very much for uh, 
listening to art to you know uh, get a uh, to hear the story about digitalization hyper connectors in in Vietnam and please uh, stay tuned for the next session uh, which coming uh, very soon and thank you very much and goodbye thank you thank everyone. you all bye 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 <laughs>